today we are going to talk about modernism okay modernism is the topic of our discussion for this day so what is modernism let, let us see see modernism so term widely used to identify new and distinctive features in subjects forms concepts and style of literature and the other arts in the early decades of the 20th century we have this as the first uh, explanation here but still before moving to all those we have to see this term which is not really uh, very uncommon to us we are familiar with this term modern not if not modernism as a movement we are still uh, somewhere familiar with the modern as a term and modernism of course nowadays you know this is um, something connected with ism we have we use that term in connection with the some of the movements or something right so here modernism as a movement we have to discuss but before that we have to talk about modern as the concept which is which can exist at any point of time as uh, some isms or if some of the movements when we talk in the context of some of the histor uh, historical time period or some of the nations that is in one way or other that is set in a particular time period between uh, some era some uh, decades but modern just think about uh, you your parents talking about you as modern yeah my children they are my, the kids of this time they are modern but just think about the possibility or the chance for them the our parents being called by their parents also as modern but that is something new you are trying something new you are dressing you are lifestyle something modern that is uh, you are changing something which is not the which is already not the but you are doing you are trying with something entirely different for a uh, see during a time period during a time of your existence so this is the way you talk about modern so we cannot always place that in a particular time period okay in 1940 you can see modern people now in 2000 you can see modern people now with the new generation also it's modern is a term which is just about a kind of existence okay modern way of life way, way style and style and all but what about our talking about this term modernism that is very particularly uh, we can place uh, which which we can place in a decade in a historical time period just wait so uh, now modernism as a movement we are going to place in a different con in, in a particular time period that is why in the very definition you get there it's used to identify the distinctive features in subjects forms concepts and styles of literature this is a movement that actually we connect with or we used to you we, we uh, talk in the context of the differences and the changes or new experiments which we made use in the literature the very specifically literature art and culture of the 20th century okay that means 19th the 19th and 20th century in the very beginning of the 20th century you can see this as the movement but especially after the world war especially after the world war so after the world war in the prior class prior session we told, talked about something uh, of the same nature after the world war the whole so center of culture comes to identify the real reality of the world the anguish existence of the world in general and we we our attempt or our identifying the need to change and th that's how we come across absurd literature so, but that is actually even later modernism and uh, we can talk about absurdism absurd literature even later but modernism comes even before because we know absurd literature we had connected with the both the world war or the after the uh, whole, the uh, the cru crucial impacts of the world was both in general we came across we identified the human existence to be really tough 
right and later we began to produce literature of the kind without having any connection without having much uh, see uh, what do you say harmony or very omni omniscient omnipotent omniscient narrator or very uh, scattered way of literature we began to produce after our identifying or acceptance of the impact of the world wars in general but here it is in the very beginning after the world war first world war itself we come to have a lot of changes in the literature itself we know we knew how the prior literature had been the former time period how literature had been you know with the neo classic neo classic rigidity or with the any other uh, strict and uh, strict and uh, prominent or elite literature how strict they were about maintaining the nature of the character team uh, concepts everything they were really very particular about but later on we went on to see we we, we came to see the entire draft drastic shift in our tone style and uh, approach towards the character building theme building everything later on so that is the point at which modernism we have to talk about this is a deliberate and radical break with the traditional basis we don't have a uh, see no longer this traditional basis that's what we do in the case of modern lifestyle as well just think not in the context of uh, dressing or uh, food culture or anything that is what we are doing we are challenging the tradition okay just think about uh, see people women opting for some jeans or kurti instead of sari that is again inst- uh, that is again breaking with the tradition so in the same way food culture as well so instead of uh, see rice curries and all we are having noodles and all as our see junk food as our junk food culture nowadays we have so this is the way we have in modernism a deliberate or radical break with the traditional basis we had a base of be base that is traditionally we had been following something and now we have something entirely different okay and the specific features signified by modernism or by the adjective modernist what do you mean by the adjective modernist modernist people modernist era so here we can use this modernist as an adjective to signify the people or the time period or the whole uh, scenario in which this kind of a break with the tradition does exist and it vary with the user but many critics agree that it involves a deliberate and radical break with some of the traditional basis okay and not only of western art it's not just with the western culture you cannot think about 1940s and 1980s in india or many other colonized nations this modernism becoming possible of, of course these kinds of very radical movements started from the western centers because we know how uh, these people had been prominent they had been uh, dominating all the other places other nations in the in the name of hegemony imperialism and uh, colonization of course you know only after 1947 after our nation becoming independent this eastern hemisphere or many other colonies could think at least about uh, see, immediately after independence we can never ex- we couldn't even expect about this modernism modern tendencies coming to india with the immediate effect but this uh, the roads had that this beginning had been already there the thinking about breaking with the tradition that came in as of course in the western cultures western center because they were already really very developed they were already showing development they were already already using technology they were already thinking uh, higher because they could have they could they were not really chained under any colonized or uh, imperial powers so this of course we can expect this to come from uh, come from the western centers and now but western art but the western culture in general that is the main point you have to think not just in art in art uh, break with the tradition of course mean the techniques we made use in absurd literature but absurd literature is even more radical because it came even later but in the modernist tendency itself we could see a lot of 
break with the tradition or were an attempt to move away from traditional uh, methods. An important intellectual uh, precursors of modernism in the sense are thinkers who had questioned the certainties that had supported traditional modes of social organization, religion and morality and also traditional ways of conceiving the human self. What is it? So now we had in the, in the traditional uh, traditional mode of thinking, we have something like we have thinkers who had questioned certain, see we have thinkers who, or we had intellectual people even who did believe that human self is something st uh, stable, you can always think higher, you can always achieve something great. But later, after the world war, we all, the Western Center even came to an understanding that this is not always the same. Okay, and now the Western, see, that is why they wanted to question the certainties of the traditional mode of social organization, even religion. You might have uh, come across the term Victorian dilemma. So even at that time itself, with the advent of science and technology itself, the Western culture, Western centers began to question the authenticity of religion. That means religious bases began to be questioned as well as religious beliefs. The people began to move away from religious uh, strength or religious beliefs. So that also had been taking place and with the the world war and the impact it was almost over or it was coming to a culminating culmination that means people began to identify or with all the guilt and anguish they began to accept the fact or in one way or other accepting or in identifying the fact that this life is like this we cannot have always we cannot always have control over the life or the life uh, uh, cultural gathering or as a whole our established the systems uh, intact as we thought and as we have been thinking throughout okay now then uh, then we now now come back to the ways of conceiving human self. Now it's about the human self, you know. Human self, they had been thinking, the Westerners, especially the Westerners, because think about the colonized subjects. They might not be having very uh, high regard for themselves because they were already treated like slaves. You might have come across the movies of the time when uh, how Indians or any other colonized human beings were treated as such. But it in the western centers and western culture they were already uh, living in a very high manner in a very elitist uh, more they were their life they were adopting in a very high regard they were going on with a high high style high high uh, mode of existence had been really something really uh, great you know Okay, so they never thought that this is going. This was going to be scattered in one way or other. This is going to be. So this was going to be affected. So now, uh, thinkers such as Frederick Nietzsche. Have you come across this term, Nietzsche? N i e t z s o c h e Nietzsche. Did I, didn't I mention it uh, while discussing absurd literature? This person. I hope so. Nietzsche, Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud and James G. Fraser whose uh, tall volume The Golden Book, Fraser's book I have mentioned here, The Golden Book, stressed the correspondence between central Christian tenets and pagan often barbaric myths and rituals. You don't have to uh, pay more attention to this point now because we have to see how modernism works out. As a whole, it is about the moving, breaking away from tradition as we saw in absurd literature. But as the term was already taught, you should not be confused. This actually came in the first place. Okay, modernism. After that, we have post-modernism. Next term we will, which that, that we will discuss will be post-modernism. And absurd literature, of course, you can connect with the 
post modern tendency more than modernism and we will see what is this what the difference we will see between modernism and a post modernism okay and some of the works as we talked about uh, waiting for godo for understanding the the real sense the blood sense of uh, absurd literature here also we have two or three words that can bring you to the uh, that can get you the idea regarding the nature of the works that came in modernism that uh, that was uh, coming out in modernist method my modernist time period the works the nature of the works that came out in or uh, came out during this time okay for many experimental works of literature which signal sig sees signal that the moments of modernist innovation began to appear especially uh, ulysses by james joyce ts eliot's wasteland which i will be talking for you to make you get the idea of uh, modernism the spirit of modernism you can we will discuss this very text the wasteland by ts eliot so how will you write down the name of this text the wasteland even though it is a poem it is it's a book length publication so always you have to underline when you mention this title and uh, is this wasteland together no the wasteland the wasteland as three separate terms th the wasteland land as a separate term so initial words capitalizing wasteland by ts eliot okay and uh, what about the wasteland that actually tells you about the modern existence the anguish the problem the crisis of modern human be modern life, modern existence nowadays we talk about modernism in a very modern wow, more modern lifestyle not very traditional even tradition the term you do not want to or most of the majority of the people do not want to okay but what about modern modern when you hear it's something of a positive note you are attempting some changes you are welcoming changes but in the beginning modernism beginning of modernism you can see such works coming out and the people the writers who produced the work with a lot of break with the tradition they were not at all very happy about these changes they were not at all really happy about such changes that means they began to identify that world is already like this our existence is always under threat it's not as we thought before the wars it is not that stable or secure or very uh, safe and uh, peaceful as we thought before the world war the sense of security is at loss and now began they but there is no other way left out as we talked about absurd literature this is the only way we can represent the life and uh, people at this time it, de during this crisis otherwise it's it will be really yeah, an idealizing it's just about you are having very you you see a lot of people in advertisements you know none of us are like that see even the uh, the models in the fairness cream ad center you know you know one is going to be that fair as they portrayed the okay but still we have this special, but now they have see this is this will be happening if these people are portraying the reality or if they are hiding this reality that is we are we all are now in the mode of the our existence is now in the uh, realm of in the it's, it's going on in the mode of a challenge or in one way or other crisis we are under crisis and even now even after this if you are going on producing literature or art or uh, cultural uh, forms just by portraying everything as intact and peaceful that will not be uh, allowing the space for portraying literature or making use of literature for portraying reality so this is the present reality after the world war we are left out not with a much peace and much much of comfort so to represent such a world such an existence we need 
something different of this kind. So scattered way of narration. Fragmented narration. The characters with, uh, without much of an identity or the characters who are always under identity crisis and uh, turmoil or ways without any and they are uh, the characters without much peace of mind or uh, without having any sense of uh, see thinking or reason reason of reasoning power this is the way they began to produce uh, literature or create characters and the situations in literature so in wasteland what happens we will see the catastrophe of the war had strict shaken the faith in the moral basis coherence and durability of western civilization and raised doubts about the adequacy of traditional literary modes to represent the harsh and dissonant realities of the post war world post war world means the world after the war either second or first world war now we have understood this is not coherent the world is not going to be uh, rebuilt at ease as we think the catastrophe of the war we will have to suffer even after so to represent such a reality even now you are portraying literature like a very peaceful uh, the characters with all peace and comfort just thinking about their family uh, without much uh, problems or thinking about see a crisis in the family it's, it will be just idealizing it will be just romanticizing but that is no longer possible this world is something of this way the world has come down to such a level okay thus this is the present reality and to represent such a reality we need a literature of this kind okay now in the world in the wasteland by T.S. Eliot 1922 of course you might have come across this uh, text in your history text I'm sure right yeah so here uh, Eliot replaced the standard syntactic flow of poetic language by fragmented utterances and substituted for the traditional type of coherent poetic structure a deliberate dis dislocation of parts don't worry I'm just reading for you I'll explain parts in which very diverse components are diverse components are related by connection that are left to the reader to discover or invent so wasteland as a poem just I will explain uh, for you what happens so the way the narration goes okay just wait So wasteland, what happens in wasteland? Wasteland, it's almost like a scattered, see, you might have seen collages. Sometimes we make collages out of paper cuttings. There will not, is it the way you see, you uh, view a paper report with all these structures, get very, uh, what is a very organized way of giving reports without having any uh, columns left out everything in a, arranged in a very proper manner right it's not what you get in a collage so you can see the dis, uh, the difference between the internal structure of a poem which is not that modern and which is belonging to modern tradition like a wasteland you can see the same kind of difference here to see a paper newspaper report you have all uh, reports all the parts uh, uh, scan, uh, arranged in a very well structured manner but that kind of an arrangement you can never see in any any of the modern writings and especially in wasteland this is an epitome of epitome for modernist tendency modernist writing okay so here what you see is a, a kind of a, it's a notoriously difficult poem actually wasteland is called as a very notoriously difficult poem what is the difference for this notorious uh, difficulty because you cannot uh, read this poem uh, as you read some solitary reaper you cannot always understand what is going on you will never be able to connect uh, any of the points as you read a poem of a very silly uh, they're talking about very silly very simple uh, themes or concepts it's something like you you cannot even identify the speaker of the poem 
when you uh, he, when you read solitary people of course you know either it is the speaker or the a, pass, a, a man who passes by that's all other confusions do not occur though but here what happens is something entirely different in the first few stanzas you see you come across a speaker some speaker talking about something all of a sudden you see uh, the scene scene even sh shifting without having any a smooth way of uh, shift it's not a sm smooth way of shifting between all of a sudden you see some other other person talking which is not having any connection with the prior stanza and again all of a sudden you are going to another another speaker but now where you can identify who is speaking which speaker is they are not with any names they are if even the shifting between the themes or the topics you cannot identify so this is the way this is almost like a broken image it's almost like a broken mirror you cannot always identify what is happening what the poet wants to talk about but all of a as a whole this form signifies something how a wasteland will be just think about the open dumping we have in the cantonment area is okay uh, could you see the waste uh, getting very uh, getting arranged in a very structured very organized way does anyone take that uh, see effort to make that arranged to make all the uh, see organic waste in one part inorganic waste in another part no you can see it dumped in that way without having much arrangement or anything right so in the same way we can see this wasteland as a whole once you finish off reading the whole poem you will see one thing entirely different that is it is it signifies the world the war, war, world after the war that means now you are like this you are scattered like this your mindsets your way of living your ways of thinking everything is scattered in this way okay no longer we are living in a very harmonious world it is already affected by the world war so so it is almost like the waste land just think about the war field where you have scattered dead bodies you cannot even identify whether it is that of uh, the uh, the soldier from britain or germany or france whichever place even you cannot identify the dead bodies so that is the way a waste land is for you so same with the narrator the shifting narrator narrator the perspectives the ch the topic change everything you can see in a waste in this waste land a poem by t s eliot of course he wanted that itself so the ultimate human dilemma the ultimate anguish of our existence this is what you mean by or this is what this modernist writers wanted to try in their even in their techniques of narration okay with the that they wanted to wanted to tell the world or make the world understand that or to take this as a reality that this is only possible no longer we have a very very harmonious existence as we always think or prefer so that's what is happening in wasteland i will send you uh, the recording for wasteland if you are really interested i will send you and i can listen okay and uh, see which very diverse components are related by connection that are left out to the reader to discover sometimes you may be uh, finding out a new reading out of this wasteland the perspective shifts or whatever the characters many many characters come and go it's not as you always see uh, with uh, some two or three characters sometimes their conversation which is easily identifiable it's not there that possibility is not there in a modern art so that we have this break with the traditional base you can see this traditional base there you are having a radical and deliberate what do i mean by deliberate you are doing it deliberately you are do doing it deliberately what do you mean by the term deliberate intentionally 
that means you have done it with of uh, out of purpose that means it's not something uh, out of knowledge or you are not unaware of doing something you are aware of doing something you are you want it and you do it okay so idiot or any other modern writers they wanted this shift only in that way they could bring or they could signify the the change in the world and its existence of the face in general okay so now major works of the modernist fiction also subvert the basic conventions of earlier prose fiction by by breaking up with the narrative continuity departing from the standard ways of representing characters and violating traditional syntax and coherence of narrative language by the use of stream of consciousness and other innovative modes of narration don't worry i will explain now wasteland is a poem you know wasteland is a poem what about the modern fiction modernist fiction also you can see a lot of modernist fiction of course we mentioned one name ulysses we have a lot of other writers like uh, c virginia wolf many others okay so other european american writers such as marcel proust thomas mann franz kafka kafka of course i mentioned with uh, this um, metamorphosis text i gave you the brief narration on that Ka franz kafka dorothy richardson wallace stevens eugene o'neil and bertolt brecht many other writers to list out but here just with the uh, what happens in modern fiction let me explain okay yeah so modern fiction what is the uh, usual way of you are having characters in a novel i hope at least one or two novels you might have read by this time at least the short stories just think about the prose paper and the short stories you had in that you had to study in that paper okay let's think about school for sympathy in that you have one person coming and of course you get the idea that he is coming to a school and you have the very proper idea the character development about you you get a lot of idea about miss beam the school the way they um, see go on with this uh, system proper in that how they maintain the school all these ideas we get just by reading one or two or three paragraphs of the short fiction same with the uh, former traditional uh, fictions as well because we have a main hero or the events in the life of the hero getting narrated without having any interruption without having any break or any of this scattered mode of uh thinking nothing is the ray of can read out it like very uh, in a very smooth manner so if you are even if you stop in the middle and then continue reading the next day you will not be having any sense of uh, connection getting lost in between but what about this modern fiction we have to see how much uh, traditional um uh, uh, traditional features they are deliberately throwing away to bring something new breaking up with the narrative continuity first thing of course in wasteland also we can see the same with the multiple narrators even without our being able to identify the narrator same thing is happening narrative continuity is broken so there is no narrative continuity in the modern fiction because the re so that the reading will not be very smooth you re you will find it very difficult to fi finish off reading a modern novel modern fiction because of course there is no narrative continuity okay sometimes it is bit of flashbacks in a film even we find it very difficult to identify or to grasp the point when uh, it uh, shows some flashbacks uh, recurrently uh, one after another if it is again coming back then going back to uh, some other uh, events in the past so flashbacks are really good to see but in reading it creates even more difficulty okay and that is the first thing that they do do with the fiction that is narrative continuity is broken in the prior traditional novels you can never see this robinson crusoe the very big pamela these novels are not at all modern fiction 
they were they, they, they so the, in the very beginning of our no, novel tradition we saw these novels of course you know how pamela moves how robinson crusoe moves okay and uh, the events happening in the life of the hero it is almost given like you get it like a diary you, there is no uh, see shifting between narrative points or anything you can read it like in a very smooth manner you can go on with the reading of this text okay but what about the modern text it is without narrative continuity one other thing is departing from the standard ways of representing characters what is the standard ways of representing characters we have a very uh, idealized concept of the hero mm, hero should be very prominent person with all the skill adventurous all these other features we attach even now we can see this modern tendency in our movies as well this uh, the tendency coming to our movies we, we do not always see uh, heroes with all the uh, physical and mental moral strength nowadays we have weaker heroes as well such uh, people the characters are the uh, the real human beings of the time even after first world war we are again moving to even worse times after the second world war again this reality uh, this is the reality of our lives nowadays right so here now it is with the standard ways of representing characters think about the, uh, our vladimir and his brother what are they doing are they making plans for the next day no they are not doing anything are they making very sensible conversation not at all they are playing with their time they are spending their time idle without doing anything as per uh, our standard ways of thinking if we want to how we have a concept of spending time that is why always you have this uh, this uh, altercation this blaming on the part of parents oh he is always playing with the tv he is always see, sorry he is always in front of the tv he is always uh, in front of the game he is always addicted to the game games so this is the way you have an ideal uh, way standard ways of characters that is a character without wasting time without um, it's making insensible talks but that is no longer possible because we all are insensible that is why we have war otherwise we might not have might not have gone for or opted for wars of this kind how many losses how many lives how many innocent people died so of course these people the writers began to feel this uh, the importance as well as the need to represent such people the insensibilities of the people in their writings okay and violating the traditional syntax and the coherence traditional syntax what do i mean by syntax the arrangement of words sometimes it is scattered the narration when you uh, see if it is in a if in a in an essay for the examination you cannot see this you cannot always experiment with this traditional syntax getting broken the coherence of writing getting broken we always tell uh, in introduction then the major content and the conclusion but you cannot expect all these in a in a modern fiction modern writing modern any kind of any genre especially modern fiction this uh, possibility is at the highest level because you have a, a lengthy space there you have a very higher space there it's a lengthy kind of uh, a genre it's a lengthy genre novel in, in any case it, whether it is modern or tradition it's lengthy uh, 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 writing so that you can uh, experiment with all these methods in the same okay and uh, now there is a term you can see the the stream of consciousness before that so now with the stream of consciousness it's one of the major techniques they adopt in their fiction writing mainly about fiction writing so what is this stream of consciousness technique the main writers who made use of this we have already i have already given you the names of the people actually i wanted to ask about the presentation if please don't wait for me to tell you every day you can take that page the page uh, in the very beginning i told you to take that okay so modernism uh stream of consciousness what do you mean by the stream of consciousness technique in the traditional mode of narration 
you do not have to think about the stream of consciousness. In the traditional model, you have a character who is uh, the who uh, is living, who is uh, doing his or her jobs or his or her life uh, daily routine he is going on with and you have a narration in the very structured, organized and uh, coherent manner. The, so there is no talk about stream of consciousness. But here we have a uh, stream of consciousness in modern fiction. That is, I will tell you what is what this is, what they are doing in stream of consciousness technique to adapt or again to bring about this break with the uh, narrative continuity. Okay. So, of course, you just think about a person named A. His story is getting narrated. Okay. So, just think uh, the person's story is getting narrated. And he is uh, moving, he is walking, he is going for a job. All those are explained or narrated in the first few paragraphs of the novel. Okay. All of a sudden, he reaches in a shop. Okay. The he meets his old friend. Hmm? His old friend. In a traditional way of narration, you have, okay, after meeting the old friend, you have the person A goes to, goes to his office or home and all these uh, events happening getting narrated without having any break. The old friend is older, okay, he met the old friend, nothing more. But in stream of consciousness, just think, after meeting the ones he meets, the old friend, no other talk about the present life of Mr. A, but he goes back to their college days of, of some 40 years back. And all the events happening or most of the events he recollects all of a sudden getting narrated in the novel. And all of a sudden, again, after uh, some 10 or 15 paragraphs, you come back to the events getting the events of the life of Mr. A at the present in 2020, say for example. So this is the way you have stream of consciousness. That is again another idea, another viewpoint. That is, that is, you people, we people live. We people do a lot of things, uh, but of course we have this way of, we have the tendency to think about or go back to our past life, think a lot and lot about our past life. At some point, every day this happens. That is what you mean by daydreaming. At times in the classes, just think about the classes getting, uh, classes going on. Okay. But sometimes you may be, you may seem like listening but sometimes you may be at home you may be thinking about the events at home today yeah it's uh, today it's uh, uh, my mother uh, pro uh, she promised me about making some very favorite food of mine so you may be going back to that again you come back to the class sometimes after at the interval time you meet all of a sudden you come across a book and uh, you just read the book and you go back to some other past memories. So this is always happening in our life. But we didn't identify. But till, till date, this modernist stream of consciousness technique came out. People never wanted to do this or to try with such a narrative technique. They always wanted to uh, narrate, the, uh, narrate the life or the life sketch of the people like 1990s, 1991, 1992, 1993. Every year after year, very arranged and very, uh, see, chronological way of narrating events in the life of a person. But is it so? No. We always, even when we talk about living in the present, sometimes we are back to our memory. Sometimes you go to future events. Sometimes you can even imagine about some future. After 10 years, I will buy a car and you will be thinking about the car. You will be thinking about playing music and going to some very uh, favorite spots of yours. So that also can come as part of narrating about you. 
This is what you mean by stream of consciousness. That means as a stream, as a it's a in the waking mind you have different, different, different images coming like a stream. It's a flow, you have a lot of images. Very smooth manner it comes to you. A lot of images come to you and uh, you have uh, that kind of a narration as well getting uh, getting uh, see experimented with in your more fictions fiction writing so here stream of consciousness so of course that will not get you a very smooth reading all of a sudden till uh, paragraph 10 you might may, might have been getting the events of a person's life in the present all of a sudden just thinking think about the events uh, getting narrated without having any connection with the what you have been getting till till now okay so this is the way we have stream of consciousness technique and many other forms like the surrealism, expressionism. We have breaking away with the representational conventions. Of course, you know, art is most basically about representation. But in stream of consciousness like that we have other uh, techniques like surrealism, expressionism. You have much expression. Expressionism is something even uh, beyond this. But uh, for the time being just understand stream of consciousness at least uh, happening in this way. Okay. And uh, now another many other uh, forms like modernist paintings. You have very abstract paintings, sculptures of Cubism, futurism, all these are different modes of experimenting with the techniques. Okay, techniques of uh, techniques in general. So, this is uh, how they wanted to br uh, bring about a radical break with the traditional basis. And now we have violation of standard and the conventions of melody, harmony, rhythm. That you can talk about, even that you can sense not, you don't have, have to go back to some western cultures to think about the breaking with the harmony, melody and all. Just think, just listen to the music, the music, the songs of some 1990s or 2000 time, time and the uh, songs you get in some new generation movies. Ayyappan Goyyappan, Pista Sumakira. All these songs, just think about these songs. Why these songs are the, we do not know. Are they harmonious, are they distributed or placed in the movies very harmoniously? In a very, in the very harmonious context? No. Why these songs are the, we do not have an answer. Just for the sake of that, we have added. But think about, uh, the song. It's exactly in the context. Okay, so we have we have had we had this provision to place everything in a very harmonious manner, at least in the past. But now we have this shift of change happening uh, with uh, this traditional basis. We do not hold on to tradition any longer. So even in India, Indian context, in cultural context of any nations, not just in Western countries, we can see the the advent, the impact of modernism coming into being. We have it everywhere. So the prominent feature of modernism is the phenomenon called the avant-garde, that is advanced regard, something making it new, that is a small self-conscious group of artists and authors who deliberately undertake the uh, undertake to making it new, to make it new, something new. Uh, the avant-garde artists represent themselves as alienated from the established order against which they assert their own autonomy because they wanted to they wanted to assert that this is the world which we expect exist which this is the world that we live in so that to represent the reality of such a world we need this as such okay we, we need this deliberate break with the tradition so just think about the new generation movies. These are in one way or other affected. The concepts are getting affected with the same model. This is we no longer let's see. Just think about the familial values getting shifted. Of course, nowadays it's not as in the past. And we can see the tendency of the character the tendency of this character portrayal. We have this differences. You can see this differences nowadays in characters. Just think about the new generation characters getting portrayed in the movies. 
of course this is this the all these are the impact if you want you can talk about you get with the modernism and of course postmodernism when we discuss postmodernism in the next class you will understand what how much they have influenced both of these movements have influenced different different realms of art and culture of the later 20th century okay so of course we will have to see that as well to have a very uh, very proper real proper understanding of this tendencies in general but modernism you see uh, they are lamenting the past they didn't want to throw away the past that is why Eliot is very sad about doing this to make this form in like a uh, see scattered broken imagery he is like he is very sad about doing that or any modernist writer is very sad about it. But postmodernism is their uh, attitude, their tone, their approach is entirely different. Please don't forget the term fragmentation that we will we will need in the discussion of modernism as well as postmodernism. Okay, modernism, uh, you know how breaking with the tradition, of course, means this fragmented fragmentation as a technique. They tried it to do with postmodernism also we will see this fragmentation and the the, the techniques they adopted in writings uh, it's the same those are the same but we will see the difference essential differences between these two main uh, uh, see techniques that the, the new movements of the modern time period era the new era we will see how do they differ so yeah, why modernism after then why do we need postmodernism of course with the modernism itself this much changes have come then why are we talking about postmodernism that is a question left out for next day thank you okay